Go on fishing. Found the locals uh, willing to take us out. So what are we, what are we targeting? Marlin, marlin, starfish, dolphinfish, dolphinfish, tuna. tuna. <laughs> That's, that's the norm out here. We are on a boat. And not just any boat, a fishing boat, and not just any fishing boat. If you looked at our gear, yeah. we're doing some serious fishing. We're about 8 to 10k out, which is um, fairly far. We've seen what well, we've seen a uh, turtle already, we've seen a lot of bonito. Yeah. So we're looking for the things chasing the bonito. I'd be happy catching that fish at home. <laughs> that's our bait. We've just rigged up, so we're, we're now waiting for that wonderful noise that you hear when you get. Yeah, that's what we're after. Hooked up to the sailfish. Been jumping out of the water a few times. And now I'm actually just starting to reel it in. I could not move it before. Yeah, heaps of weight training from corona to mouth. <laughs> Dude, I don't know if that's that a baby. That's not a baby. That's not a baby. <laughs> We got our first fish of the day and good way to start with about a two metre sailfish. I was pulling up as hard as I could and by the time I'd, the rod had gone down, I was getting this much line back on it. Have fun in Fingal Bay, Dad. We're catching sailfish in Bekingo! You're up next, bro. Oh yeah! Oh yeah, there we go! Yeah! Uh, we've got a mahi mahi, a dolphin fish, um, probably half the size of Andy's, but still, that's, uh, that's the biggest fish I've caught in a row. him up, boy. Yoo hoo hoo! <laughs> yeah, I got a photo of it. Oh! Um, we've both hooked up, we've both got some mahi mahi on. I reckon I might get in a touch before Andy had a massive run halfway through. Thank Hamie and the captain. This is a big tick in my lifetime. So you're both our old mans. They're going to be so jealous. Eh? Mate, it does not get any better than this. Biggest adrenaline rush. I've actually got the shakes. You got that much adrenaline pumping through your body. Oh man, that's uh, one of the things on my to-do list is now ticked off. That was absolutely brutal. Oh my god! Yeah! Oh. <laughs> what a day. Honestly, I. I Played how we feel right now. I didn't stop shaking for about half an hour after we caught each fish. And this was all caught before nine o'clock in the morning. It's only like quarter past eleven now. Mate, it was unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, we got these four fish in the space of half an hour. Winding two mahi mahi in together yeah. and communicating going back and forth across the boat. That'll be a, a moment I'll never forget. So we're gonna take the little mahi mahi home now and go to work on it. The rest, we're uh, we're giving back to the the guys who took us out. I hope you're having fun at work. So we've sent Benny off to the shops to get some lime and some salt because basically we are, we've taken the smallest fish from the guys um, and we, we've asked the guys what they would do with this and they said sashimi so that's what we're doing. Uh, I'm going to take a few fillets off, lime, salt and, and feed everyone that we can really get around here. So um, let's get stuck in it. I have no idea how this is going to go. I've never filled with a dolphin fish. Um, so let's see how it goes. So what Andy's doing is because it's such a big fish. Uh, if it's a small fish, you can just cut it at the head and fill it straight down and just pop the pin buttons. Because it's so big, he's got to fill it from the back end, so he's run a guideline down the backbone of the fish. And now he's just prizing it away from the, the bones. Once he gets there, he'll be able to run his knife down the pin bones and, and take the fillet away. Thank you. So from hook to pretty much having it ready to eat, it's been about three hours. And now we're just putting it in some ice water to firm the flesh up. We're going to skin it, slice it nice and thinly. So I'm just going to put together a really quick dressing, salt, lemon juice, soy, and just some fresh uh, red onion over the top. If you're game, 
I'll do a few little um, habanero rounds. Because we've been so far out, we haven't really had a chance to just go and enjoy a stroll. You would not know that the coastline we walked along was there. No, mate, we walked down the beaten track, there was a cemetery on our left, bushland to both sides, and then we just popped out yeah. at our own beach that went for kilometres that way and kilometres that way. And we had it to ourselves. Yeah. There was no one else there. No. That was the biggest walk I've ever been on. <laughs> And at times, the scariest walk I've ever been on. Yeah. We're climbing up a cliff. Yeah, and cliff. Hamie just kept going. But that's the thing. I was thinking, if Hamie can do yeah. it, then we can do it. Yeah. Once we got to that top of that peak, yeah. we were looking around, and the view was just 360 degrees around us. Well, that was a bit more intense than your Sunday stroll, but uh, I'd do that 20 times over. Yeah. That's um. Then you say this is southernmost point. Yeah. Of the whole country. Never seen anything like it. That's as close as we're going to get to the equator. To your house. Yeah, to home. <laughs> That's we'll get to home for a little while. I need a drink. Let's get to the pool. Yeah. I think that point had been building up for a while because we were going flat out. The, the, the Intrepid tour was intense. They tried to get you into as many food little hubs as possible and to try as many things as possible. And now we got to the coast and it was like, oh, I'm finally here. I remember arriving there and sort of saying to Hamie, you couldn't have picked a better spot for this point of the trip. The contrast between what we'd been through in the hustle and bustle of markets and big city to this sort of slow paced, relaxed, have a beer on the sand mm. was brilliant for that time. It's exactly what we needed. Yeah. Thank you.